This is Minesweeper in Godot, so you can click anywhere on the board to start, and it will generate a large or medium cave. And the numbers represent how many mines are surrounding that cell, so I'm going to place the flags wherever you think the mines are. And then you can click on the numbers to reveal the tiles around it, if you know that they're all safe. And um, you see this one, this is a 1, so it has one mine inside it, that means this is safe. And you want to be careful though, because if you make a wrong move, like this or something, then yeah, you're going to hit a mine, and the game will be over. So I'm going to show you how to make this, but I'm going to go pretty quickly in order to keep this in one video. So, um... In a new project, you're going to create a new scene as an other node. Uh, by the way, this is all using one node, one script. So, search for tile map, create that. You can call this Minesweeper. You can press Control S and save. And now attach a script to it. So, this is where all the Minesweeper logic is going to be written. And uh, we also need a texture for it. So if you look in the link in the description, there should be a Google Drive link to this image. So just bring this into the project. These are going to be the tiles. So um, create a new tile set and then drag the tiles in. And then click yes to automatically create tiles. And now you have uh, this tile map. So go to Project Settings, go to Window. So the board is going to be 30 by 16. And since each tile is 16 pixels wide, so we, can, we can put the width as 30 times 16 and the height as 16 times 16. And uh, go to Boot, boot Splash, set the background color to black and turn off Show Image. So go to the script. So here is the script on how to set up the initial board. So it's just going to go through the rows and columns and just uh, set uh, an unrevealed cell. So hit play, select current, and now we have uh, this. So now it's pretty small. Uh, I might want to make it twice as big. So go to project settings window. You can multiply each of these by two. Also, I forgot, but make sure you set mode to canvas items. It's important that you do that. And also click on the tile map. Let's go to transform and set scale to 2 since we doubled the window size. Now hit play and yeah, this is big enough now. Also, um, uh, go to the tile map, go to texture and set the filter to nearest. So that will basically keep the texture sharp and it will stop them from looking blurry even in full screen. Now I want to add the input for detecting when you click on cells. So go to project settings, go to input map, and you're going to add a new action called reveal. And it's going to be the left mouse button. So I added these functions which will detect where you clicked and then it's going to set it to uh, an empty cell. So now whenever I click on the unrevealed cells, it's going to turn into an empty cell. Now let's create a table which will store the IDs of all the cells that are going to be. So you can say cells. It, it's just going to be an array of integers. And let's also define uh, what the numbers are going to be. So negative 1 is an empty cell. 0 is a mine. And one, whoops, one through eight is a number cell. So when you set up the board, you want to add an empty cell to this list. So with that, you can create a mine count constant, and there's going to be 99 mines in a 30 by 16 board. And uh, we can also have a setup mine function, and in the input, we can have it detect if there are any bombs already. And if not, it's going to set up the mines. So when I hit play and then click on an empty cell, you can see it generates all the mines and they're just randomly placed along the cells list. But in order to actually see what the cells are, 
uh, we're going to need to convert uh, their coordinates on into the cells list. So that's what this function does. And then back into the reveal cell uh, function, we can um, see what the cell uh, ID is, and then we can uh, set the atlas chords based on it. And basically, if you don't know, the atlas chords are here. So like this has an atlas chord of 1, 1. This is an atlas chord of 3, 1. So this just takes the number that's in the cells, that's in the cells array, and it um, converts it into the atlas chords and then reveals it. So um, now um, if I click around the board, you should see that there are now mines. So if I add these lines of code right here, we actually get to see how the board gets set up. And I don't like how they're red, uh, so I'm just going to go down here and change this to 2-0 for now so that they're, it doesn't look weird. But um, there's actually an issue with, with this, which is that if I click, then you can see the mine can spawn right where I clicked. And uh, we don't want it to do that. So you can fix that with a while loop that will keep shuffling the cells until there's not a mine where your mouse is. And uh, you do that through a new parameter that you call with uh, the cell at mouse. So um, if I set the mine count to 479 and then click somewhere on the board, you can see that the only cell that isn't a mine is right where I clicked. So that's working. I can change it back to 99. So now it's time to make the numbered cells work. So first I created a function called get su surrounding cells and uh, this function will um, set this new variable uh, to all the cells surrounding whatever um, whatever it gets through the cell chords parameter and there's also a new offset chords variable for that um, function I'm going to use it for another function later and in the setup mines function um, there's uh, these lines of code which will generate the numbered cells. So now if I hit play and then click on a cell, now you get to see the whole board. You can, um, so like, um, this number one means that there's one mine next to it. This number two means that there's two mines next to it. By the way, it's like a, it's like a nine by nine area around the cell. So everything seems to be uh, working accurately here. And I don't see any problems, so it, that means it should be working good. Also, you can set the mine count to 479, and there will be a single 8 cell. Now I can remove these lines of code and just replace it with reveal cell, cell at mouse. So now I made it so when you click on an empty cell, then it's going to reveal all the cells around it and basically like show the whole cave. So it uses a new reveal surrounding cells function. And uh, this is just going to, to just go into the 9 by 9 area around the empty cell and then reveal all of those cells. Um, but it's also going to like basically call the function over and over again if it's if it reveals another empty cell. So hit play. And uh, if I click on an empty tile somewhere, where is it? Come on. Come on, there has to be an... Yes, okay, there we go. So I clicked on an empty tile, and you see it basically like showed the whole cave system around it. So now let's set up the logic to place and remove flags. So go to project settings, go to input map, create a new action called flag, and set it to the right mouse button. And in the input function, you can uh, add this check for when you uh, click the flag input. So now you can right click on the board and you can place and remove flags. Uh, but um, from earlier, our script that reveals the cells around it will also remove the flags. Yeah, like that. You can see once I clicked it, it destroyed the flag. So that's good. Now you may have noticed how Whenever I click on it, it's really hard to find an, a good open area. So what we want to do is that not only do we want to make it so that a bomb doesn't spawn where you click, but, but we also want to make it so that a, a good area around where you click isn't a bomb. 
So we can fix that by modifying the get surrounding cells function to take in two parameters, which is the size around an, an area. So in the setup minds function, we can change this while loop to be this. So it checks basically like a, a radius of two around where you clicked and there won't be a mine. And also make sure you set this to three. So now whenever I click, it's going to spawn in a pretty good uh, large cave. And it also makes sure that you don't click on a number button um, on a number cell whenever you first click. So that's good. So now I've added the logic that uh, whenever you click on a mine, then it's going to show all the mines on the board, and then it will end the game. So in the input, there's this new uh, if statement that will check if the cell you clicked was a mine. And if it is, is it's going to set game ended to true. Uh, and the input can't do anything if the game ended is true, which by the way, I uh, declared it up here. And it also calls a new function called reveal all mines, and it takes in a parameter, which is um, the cell that it should avoid when revealing them. So basically, this will just go through the whole board, and if the if the cell that it's looping through isn't um, the one to avoid, then it's going to set it to like to like uh, this one. Otherwise, the one that you clicked is going to be red. And I also made it so that it can detect if it's looking at a flag. And if it is, and there was actually a bomb there, it's going to switch to this one. So, uh, let's see. So I know that this, this is going to be a bomb. So once I click on it, then it's going to be red. And it's going to show all the other bombs that were on the board. So now, let's say that I click a flag where it's supposed to be. And then I click a flag, like, somewhere where there might not be a bomb. Now let's say I click on a bomb, then um, all the flags that were placed correctly are just the regular bomb, but then all the flags that I placed incorrectly will show like an X over it, meaning that I got that wrong. Now you could stop there, but I decided to add a feature, which is that if you click on a, a number cell and it has the correct number of flags around it, then it will reveal the adjacent cells. So, uh, in the input, uh, there's this line that checks if you clicked on a number cell, and it's going to go to the new and improved reveal surrounding cells function. Now, this is quite a lot, um, so, um, if I can remember how this works, yeah, so there's a new number of flags that it checks, so it's going to loop through uh, all the items around the cell. And if it was a number cell, then it's going to uh, check that um, if it's a flag that it's looping through around it, and then it's going to increase the number of flags. And if it was the, the correct amount of flags, then it's going to call the function again, and it's going to set this new parameter to true. So when this parameter is true, then it's just going to... Re reveal the cell unless it's a flag now I, I really I know that I didn't explain that well uh, because I wrote this like uh, two days ago and I kind of forgot how it works but basically um, let's see so if I click on a number cell nothing happens but let's say that I place one flag here and then once I click on this cell it will open this one that's adjacent to the one and the same thing over here, I can click one. And then this one has already has a, mine, a flag next to it. So I can click it and it will open up the stuff around it. Um, now if you put like too many flags, like let's say I put three flags around this two, then it's not going to open the cells around it. Uh, whoops. Uh, you, you can see there, that was a bug. I clicked on a flag when you, if you shouldn't be able to do that. Yeah, just make sure to add this if statement into the input function to prevent that so that you're not able to like click on a flag to reveal the cell. But anyways, um, let's say that you place a flag in the wrong spot around the cell. So like if I place a flag here and then I click on it, uh, you can see it revealed uh, the mine. 
Now, uh, it didn't show all the other mines around it. Okay, so I made a new variable called last move, which is an array of vector2 integers. And uh, in the input function, I, I added this line that will um, add the cell at mouse um, to the last move. And then uh, here, uh, if there was a mine revealed, it's just going to loop through the last move. And if it was a bomb or, or a mine, then it's going to reveal all the mines. And the new reveal all mines function will uh, take this array and it will just uh, make sure that, I think it just changed this line, make sure that the avoid array doesn't have, doesn't have the coordinates that it's looping through. And in the surrounding cells, um, this line will also append the last move. So basically um, in the input, uh, the cell that you clicked as well as uh, all the surrounding cells that you would click from a number cell will get um, added to this last move list and then it's going to check that. So, so it's okay if you don't understand but let me just show you. So if I put a flag here and then click you can see that it's going to reveal all the mines uh, on the board. I also notice that you're still able to place flags after the game has ended. So um, I think I can fix that by just tabbing this up. Uh, maybe I have to tab it up again. See, did that work? Uh, whoops. Okay, that didn't work. I'm going to have to sh shift it back. Okay, now you're not able to place flags once the game has ended. And by the way, if you're wondering why I made this an array of, of last moves, it's because, uh, let me see if I can get it to work. Okay, yeah, so you see that, uh, how when I clicked it, both of my flags were wrong. So there's gonna be two red mines, not just one. So that's why you had to make that an array of mines. In case you didn't catch anything I said and you just want to take this project, I'll have a link to uh, the project in the description on GitHub so you can download it for yourself. Um, but yeah, this is Minesweeper in Godot. Now, I, I'm not really familiar with any strategies in Minesweeper, so I just take my own time. I just, I just take my own sweet time. Now, I'm not seeing any bugs yet, so that's good. Oh, dang it. I messed it up. So that's how far I got. I didn't manage to clear the whole board. So uh, thanks for watching this. And I... I uh, hope you learned something 